Hello and welcome to Champ Select, your go-to competitive Legends of Runeterra podcast. I'm Alex, as per usual. Joining me are my two co-hosts, Noble. Hello. And Hugh. Hello. Uh, Noble, you might be able to tell, is uh, out of town once again, unfortunately. We just can't keep him around. Uh, yeah, sorry, man. Yeah, um, but we got him back on the line. It might be slightly worth o- worse audio quality through a call, but uh, I don't know. The last time we've done this, it worked out pretty well, so hopefully... Look, all my friends just won't stop getting married. So I don't know what to tell you. It's your fault for growing hopefully, up in Alaska. Hopefully the rate will slow down. <laughs> there aren't that many of them. Eventually he will run out. <laughs> All right. So uh, in this episode, uh, we just finished up with the uh, seasonal tournament. Well, I suppose the, first the, top, half. the top 32 is uh, is yet to go. Unfortunately, we all finished up with the seasonal tournament. Wah, wah. Uh, so we've got the seasonal to talk about, uh, the whole season as a whole to look back on. And then it's everybody's favorite time. It's spoiler season, so we've got a little bit of spoilers. To, we've got a few cards and one mechanic, one champion to talk about so far that's been spoiled. I'm, I don't know. I love spoiler season, so I mean uh, everyone loves. Spoiler yeah, I season. can't wait to get into that. But without further ado, uh, I think we should jump into the seasonal. Uh, so you and I both played the seasonal hue. Uh, Noble yes. was unable to due to wedding things, unfortunately. But uh, so what did what did you bring again? Um, think same thing I brought to the gauntlet, which was Zoe Lee uh, as Draven Thresh Nasus. And I played uh, Thresh Nasus, Azir Burn, and Dragons. Uh, and I was I was pretty happy with my lineup, to be honest. I thought it, you I thought played it, Dragons. I did. Oh no! I mean, I don't. I the, think like, Dragons the, like, was a Shavana very solid is, choice. No, I, I think it, I think it's good too. We just shit shit on it a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, like. It isn't that good against the Zero Alien, to be fair. But I mean, it at least it wasn't in the past. I don't know. I've I've always loved these big Targon Demacia decks. Yeah, and they oh, generally yeah. perform not- pretty well as tournament decks. And um, as I expected, Azarelia seemed to completely shit the bed in the tournament. Yeah, that was really the story of this tournament. Is that like, boy, didn't was there like not a lot of Azarelia towards this? Oh, okay, honestly. As a whole, and and this makes me really happy looking back at it because we were kind of doomsaying a little bit, and then I looked at the top results of this seasonal tournament, and there was like nobody playing like more than one or two copies of like tier one decks you'd see on ladder. Like it was like all Brew City, like everybody that showed up with a good plan that seemed like they'd prepared well for it, with like a slightly off the wall take, whether it be like triple aggro or. You know, some weird Targon's Peak deck, right? <laughs> like, you know, we saw a bunch oh, of stuff yeah. like this that, that just managed to 8 1 9 0, even the seasonal. I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, yeah. someone in our Discord hit, like, hit, got it with, uh, clutched a top 32 with, uh, Targon's Peak and a pretty cool otherwise lineup, too. Um, I think there was, like, a couple of TF Fizz decks that all made, that made the cut. Oh, like, yeah. uh, it was weird. And I don't think, uh, Riot has posted. I don't. I don't think we have any official data as to what the actual results were quite yet at the time of recording yeah, this, totally. unfortunately. And, and like by next week, we will have the the winner and stuff. So we'll have a pretty good look at like. I would love to see like more data. Like I don't know if in the past I've seen all third all. Okay, I guess it's ninety six deck lists posted, which kind of makes sense because that's a lot of deck lists. But it would be really cool to see. I'd like all to see the them data all. in one place, like what they qualified with and then what decks they changed or kept. Yeah, I would love to. And even like I would totally understand if Riot didn't want to release that information before the tournament. Right. Like it makes a lot of sense to not release all of that. They definitely shouldn't before. Yeah. The, the Well, the, the top 32 of the tournament is yet to happen. But I don't really think there's oh, any wait, reason sorry, why they shouldn't sorry, release I, it I, after. I just hopped on Twitter to like find the lineup of a particular person and they did post top 32 by the numbers. Oh, sick. Great. Yeah. Um, what's, so, uh, what's the general rundown? I guess we just saw it. So this, is ju- this is just the champions, once again. Um, region-wise, it looks like um, Shadow Isles was the biggest, closely followed by Shurima, and then kind of like Noxus, Freljord, Piltover, and Zaun, getting like slightly smaller, but around the same amount, and then Targon, Ionia, uh, Bilgewater, Demacia were the, were the, were the bottom. Of the barrel here. I'm sp- um, was Demacia the lowest played? The least? It looked like it, yeah. That's pretty interesting. That's surprising. I don't think so, because Deep is such a 
Uh, Deep was actually so good this tournament. Deep was a house this tournament. Yeah. Like, and yeah. the people who figure that out probably seem to have done it. Was really that. interesting. Um, so there were 15 copies of Azir, so less than half of the decks were playing Azir, and um, 14 copies of Draven, 12 copies of Zoe, and then uh, that means uh, and 11 copies of Irelia, which means unless some mad lad was playing uh, MF Irelia, it means 11 copies of M uh, Azir Irelia. So about a third of people ended up bringing Azir Irelia, which considering that each person has three decks is actually very low. Yeah, I agree. I think that people um, like specifically targeted Azir Irelia a lot. And because of that also just didn't bring it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so there were 12 Zoe's, 11 Lysandra's, 11 Ezreal's, 10 Aurelian Souls, 10 Threshes. Um, so importantly, I just want to say um, only seven. So I'm skipping a little bit, but 11 Lysandra's and only seven Trundles mean only seven TLCs. Yeah, that um, must have meant uh, quite a bit of probably Lysandra. Talia was probably, I would I think assume, people, the other four Lysandras. I think people have just cut Talia mostly yeah or just from what i've seen or whatever that makes a lot of sense yeah. to me that was always that card then, just never then, really was very good in that so deck. then there was uh a eight sedwani sivers and nasuses which means only eight copies of thresh nasus which is a fourth um Re renekton seven copies of renekton and trundle uh six of shivana and vi uh five each of nautilus and maokai makes sense that they're together five talias so that kind of matches up with the that sounds disparity about right. between Lysandra and Nasus, although that's three, or sorry, the difference between Lysandra and Trundle, which is four. So someone was playing either like Trundle in a weird list or, or uh, Tally in a weird list. Um, and then five there, Jinxes. There was a Talia Malphite. Five deck, weeks. I believe. I saw on Twitter. But somebody, the, I think somebody made it with a Talia Malphite deck. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then there was a then there is Jinx and Elise also at five, and then three, two, one. The the interesting twos are like there were two Twisted Fates and two Fizzes. There were three Ashes and Timos and Darius's and Tridimirs. Uh and then there was one deck that was Champless, one Jarvan, one Shen, one Lee Sin, one MF, one Gangplank, one Tom Kench, one Soraka, yeah. one Victor, one Leona, one Diana. So like the one of the field. Meta. But like honestly, this is a very healthy looking metagame. I agree. Yeah, like like if you like, had just shown me this seasonal tournament report, like or even just like the seasonal tournament in general, the seasonal tournament felt very health. Like, I don't know. It felt like people did put in their research, like people took the time to think about what they were going to do, and they assembled three decks that weren't necessarily the best ladder decks. You probably hadn't seen them in a long time or whatever that just happened totally. to line up really well, and they, like, crushed it with crushed them with it. And, like, this is... All right, this has happened, I think, every time now. Almost every seasonal. Does it feel like to you guys that you're noticing a trend in the seasonal tournaments being defined not by the ladder decks that were definitive at the meta at the time no um i think a better way to think about it is that they are defined by the ladder decks we're just not looking at it in the sense that those ladder decks we're looking at it like we think the uh, some of those ladder decks should be very prevalent in the in the top 32 um this was this was true last season but mm -hmm. um other than last season i think this is the most extreme example of people targeting the meta properly and yeah. um, trying to catch people and succeeding at catching people off guard with things that they just haven't seen at all or very little of because the meta, this was like the most stale and defined ladder meta we've had. I would agree. Yeah. And because of that, it was way, way, way easier to hone in on what the average person might have brought who just like didn't want to think about it too much. I think this tournament really helped out a lot of the like really good deck builders or a lot of yeah. the really good brewers because the, like i said you were right this was a pretty stable meta it had like you know most brewers had a solid month and a half like since the patch or whatever where they knew what the meta was and they could be 
you know, like nothing changed in the last month and a half, yeah. right? Like you could have yeah, put no a month and a half of thought. Two weeks before. Yeah, or basically, yeah. you know, and like, you know, there was a patch relatively soon, but it didn't, it didn't really change, change a whole lot. Anything. Right? Like, it just you know, made one of the best decks slightly weaker. Yeah, your previous theories were probably all similar, like yeah. similarly, if exactly, you know, very true. So like, it gave people time, I think, to like really come up with these lineups that were really good. And like, I don't know, I'm not a great deck builder, which is unfortunate because I keep watching all of these great deck builders crushing like these, these like seasonal bizarre nonsense. with like one ladder deck and then two like weird things I'd not heard of or whatever. And it's this, it's it continues to see similar faces, right? Like, yeah. You know, there are people that have made three or three out of four or four out of four. Even I think maybe Majin Bay made four out of four. I'm not sure. There, there's like, there's people that are yeah, absolutely but, crushing these, and every single time, yeah, there's at least one deck I'd never heard of, I'd never seen, yeah. right? And so, like, I'm beginning to think personally that, uh, at least myself, I am, I'm vastly underestimating the importance of being a good deck builder for the seasonal. Like, and I think that this is a diff like i have not experienced this in another card game. like i've never really had to sit down and really think and work on my like deck construction lineup construction like try to find a new thing to attack the meta in in the past like i've usually just been able to net deck my way through and play good decks and like it's been good and i'm i mean i don't think that you can't just play the best decks and and win the seasonal obviously i think you can but i, I think there's a lot of advantage to be gained that maybe i in the past i've been leaving a little bit to the wayside so i think that um something that we just have consistently uh underestimated is how incredibly difficult it is to play this game into a deck you've never played into before and that's like because there's so much uh nuance and so much depth to this game um as opposed to like like hearthstone you did have sure. the three deck well, the or you did what it was four it decks was, it was it was usually the similar format. Yeah, yeah it was, it was usually four format. decks, ban one, best of five, or but whatever. Because Hearthstone or best is of three. Hearthstone's a little simpler. You can't play cards on your opponent's turn. It also like there's a lot of things you can do in this game that you couldn't do in that game. Yeah, in Hearthstone, I had a lot of success playing the three best ladder deck decks right. as my tournament lineup with small changes based on the fact that I knew I was getting a ban. Right. Like, and it's not like I wouldn't prepare for these tournaments. You know, I'd make my deck a little different. I'd prepare because I knew what I was going to ban. Right. You know, I'd bring a lineup I thought was good. I was comfortable with. But like, it was almost always like three really good ladder decks. Yeah. Like I at all three, every deck I registered for a tournament in Hearthstone, I think I would have been happy playing on ladder. And that is just not true in not this true. game that I've seen. Yeah. Now. And I think the reason that it works, uh, that we're seeing a difference in, um, these two games between Hearthstone and Legends of Runeterra is that in Hearthstone, because it's a little simpler, um, when you come across something unexpected and weird and something you haven't seen before, it's much easier because of the simplicity of that game to fall back on fundamentals and still just do fine. Yeah, and I also um, think that we, and I mean, again, this is some reflection here, but I think that maybe we overstate, or at least maybe I do, I tend to over because like in Hearthstone, it felt like there was a real gap between the best decks you could be playing and the next best decks. And it, it feels like that in Legends of Runeterra 2 on ladder. But like, I think the gap might be much smaller between like I an agree. effective ladder deck in Legends of Runeterra versus a tier two deck in Legends of Runeterra. That, and that gap is, I think, much smaller than it would be in was in Hearthstone, where like it did feel like if you brought a deck that was here to beat priest, right? Like, you know, you can't just show up with some random garbage warrior deck to try and beat priest and hearthstone, right? It's a bunch of four power units. This is great. And like, they were bad, right? Like you couldn't play good units, right? Cause they're just, and also, you know, I was playing hearthstone relatively early on. There weren't that many cards. So that probably had something to do with it, but still like, I think that these, like we, we are not giving enough credit to these random tier two legends of Runeterra decks that you've never seen before because the cards in this game are good. Like, yeah, it's not that hard to put 40 good cards in the deck and it might not be the best deck ever, but it can absolutely have good matchups. Yeah. And, and that's, I, I think that's just because of how much more you can do in this game and how much more complex yeah. it is. It's, it's so much more difficult to play into something you've never seen before. And it's very nerve wracking when you're sitting there. Um, I don't know how it is for you, but I know for me personally, when I sit down and I see my opponent's lineup and I see two decks I've never seen before, it's horrifying. It is horrifying. It feels it's like they like, know something you don't. 
Yeah, and they usually, and the thing is, they usually do at that point. And yeah, uh, they usually do, too. Um, yeah. Maybe not in the, like, first two or three rounds when they bring, like, a whole lineup of things you've never seen. You're like, okay, maybe some of, maybe one or two of these is bad. Um, and sometimes they're also just not bad, and you just lose to them. I know that, um, like, the like my gauntlet run, when the only game I dropped was to a Zed Katarina deck, and I was just like, that was the least meta deck I saw, and I lost to it. Yeah, and I lost to several things in this seasonal tournament that um, did not. Yeah, one of Nico's losses in one of the seasonal tournaments was to a Yasuo Katarina deck because he'd never played against it and it was really good, or it was good against him. Yeah, or he just got unlucky in us. Whatever. Like, um, regardless, it's it's easy to do. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and I do want to say about this meta, like. I, I was re, you know, reading through that thread a little bit of like people's reactions, like good now nerf is here. It's like, but actually, there are 96 decks that made it into the top 32 of this tournament, and only 15 of them were Azir. Like, that's 15% around, right? You know, let's be a little generous here, a little over that. But like, that's, I mean, pretty good considering I mean, that everyone has to bring three decks. Yeah, the okay. map doesn't really actually work because you can't bring more than one Azir deck. Each also, person. so that means that That's about fifty percent of the so fifty roughly fifty oh, yeah, percent of right, the players right. brought I, an Azir deck. I actually deck. did this in reverse last yeah. time, where I was like, actually, let's look at this right. But you are right, but like only fifty percent of people bringing what is assumedly the be- winning with what is assumedly like far and away the best deck. Like, yeah, maybe the deck needs changes. But actually, only a third of people brought it because four of those this year players were playing him with Darius. Yeah. Okay, I think um, it's a complete trap to think about the latter meta and the tournament meta in the same, in, in this I, similar agreed. way. And, and the, the deck still need changes and stuff, but like my point is that this tournament meta, regardless of the latter meta, is certainly healthier than the last two tournament metas that we've seen. That is a like, great, great point. Because I think... La- that at this point, we just need, like you just said it, tournament meta, ladder meta. Like, I've talked about it in the past, and I, I'm officially, like, it's it's taken me four four seasonal tournaments to, to finally get here. But I'm just like, at this point, like, I don't even know how much help ladder really is for, for like, a first perspective tournament field at this point. Like, it feels, the, like, the most, like, comparison I thought that was, like, really good, whereas last season there was a lot of Thresh Nasus and TLC. And that carried over into the seasonal tournament. But I think that's about the only time. I think I think just that one has been a real reflection of the latter meta in the tournament meta. Every other time, it's vastly different. I think, and uh, I I don't know. I'm I'm I think that this this upcoming seasonal tournament, like I'm going to try to make make a point of like not. Not not just bringing the best ladder decks. Like like I have a real I really struggle to bring decks that I'm not sure are good, but it's yeah. really hard to get a lot of relevant ladder. Like I I just need to play more tournament lineup sets with yeah, tournament totally. lineup. Like I, I just need to practice for tournaments way need, earlier. I you need to try new things. Gauntlets. Yeah, yeah. Need to yeah, try. New I haven't things. played any gauntlets because I'm planning to to be qualifying through ladder. But like I think that's a mistake. I think that you should still play the gauntlets. I think it gives you a lot of really good information, kind of like out in the wild. Um, yeah. And I think that it's. Um, I actually saw a discussion post about this. When the ladder de- meta is this different from the tournament meta, it feels kind of bad that tiebreakers are based on your ladder performance rather than that your performance in tournament, which is how they're usually done. And I think there's an interesting discussion to be had there. We don't have to have it, um, but um, I, I think that that's. You know, interesting. And like last seasonal, there was just so much. So this is only the winner's meta we're looking at, right? These are the 32 best that we're looking at. Yeah. So we don't actually get numbers for the tournament as a whole. Because it might have been, you know, 70% of people put Azir in their lineups. But they all lost. the people who won successfully attacked that and were good players. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess we should talk a little bit about our actual experience in the seasonal tournament. Um yeah, I mean, uh, it didn't go bad for us, right? Like, like I no, mean, my turn, my run was actually like went really well. Like, I yeah. both of us went six three, right? Six and three, yeah. Um, there was a little bit of weirdness for me at the end. My last two rounds, my game crashed. Yeah, I saw multiple like, times. I I managed to avoid those problems somehow. Like, I I pl- I just played my my round nine and everything was fine. 
Um, and I, I saw like a tweet later and I'd heard you talk about it. Apparently there was some bug in round nine, uh, where like the, the, there were like game crashes, like Riot was aware with it, aware of it. I think they notified everybody that was impacted or like corrected all the things that needed to be done. So, um, yeah. but yeah. anyway, <laughs> yeah, no, it's just some things happened and I just literally couldn't click on cards for multiples <laughs> of my games. And, um, it definitely cost me my round nine, uh, my round eight. Yeah, I think I was I was definitely losing anyway, um, and that's yeah. fine. But you know, uh, still six three is like it's amazing how like good six three feels and how like far, how far it, away it's I am. It's not that far. It's only two more, but it, two more is a lot. <laughs> two more is a lot. Yeah, there's only nine rounds. So yeah, I went six three. I I won like I was I was not banning Zira Irelia, and I was planning to beat it, and I was a little skeptical that my plan was going to really work, but I, I took a little bit of uh, advice from Hugh where he like played the last chance gauntlet and he was like, people are showing up with the Zero Irelia that don't know what they're doing. It's like, okay, like I don't think that's going to be nearly as true in the seasonal, but like uh, I was, I was expecting some people to bring a Zero Irelia and those, I, I feel like there were going to be more players bringing a Zero Irelia than competent Zero Irelia pi pilots was, was my guess yeah enough uh, people wanted to shut their brain off and be like best deck go yeah exactly it felt like there were going to be a lot of people who just hadn't played that much ladder and this season and hadn't played the game that much this season and like you know qualified for the last chance gauntlet or whatever and they were they were definitely just going to show up with the busted decks right especially is kind of kind of my guess so i brought three decks that i thought were pretty pretty good against azir irelia you know most of the time so i have thresh nasus which i think is heavily favored azir burn which i think is heavily favored and then dragons, which I think I'm like a slight dog, probably. It's, it's like roughly 50, 47, 50. I think, for you. Or yeah, like that. it's like 50 50, yeah. basically. And I, I checked like, it a little I bit. Old, like, so, yeah, there's like weird. Yeah. It's, I remember looking at a dragon's data where it was like the version with all three was 52%. The version with just Zoe was 50%. The version with Shivana was 48 or something really weird like that. Yeah, it was. It was something weird. Uh, anyway, I my plan worked pretty great. I uh, lost my second round, and then my other than that, my first five rounds were just two owing a zero Irelia. So like, I, I beat round one, two owed a zero Irelia. Lost round two uh, to like as Draven Thresh Nass's TLC. I think yeah, just lost lost some lost some close games didn't quite get there it was a close match and then like and then like rounds three four and five were all just 2 0 0 <laughs> every single time so it worked out really well and then i didn't really win the matches where my opponent didn't bring a zero Irelia, which i was disappointed in because i thought that my lineup had a real chance to to win all of the the matches that weren't against a zero Irelia. i was pretty happy with it like i i brought a, a zero burn which was the deck i was actually like the most happy that i'd had like come to my mind as the third deck because I wanted a deck that had a good Azir Irelia matchup and a reasonable matchup against the mid-range decks and I was particularly worried about as Draven I thought there'd be a lot of that because good players really have an affinity for as Draven I've noticed like people just like playing that deck which makes a lot of sense I oh, totally yeah. get it it's I mean, a, a lot of it was in a lot of the lineups I yeah. saw on Twitter and and it was just well positioned I thought so yeah. uh, I brought specifically this aggro deck because i wanted to be as draven with it really punish the fact that they don't have that much healing um but i still wanted it to be resilient and good against azir irelia so i didn't go into like teemo burn or whatever um and then uh dragons was like i don't know i was theoretically happy with most of my matchups with it but i just did not have a great win rate with it i think i i think i went like three and five in the games I played with dragons over the course of the tournaments, which was not super great, unfortunately. Um, but like I said, all things considered six and three, not bad, right? Like it was a good result. I think all things considered. And I think I learned a lot from this particular seasonal, like e even, oh, yeah. even if I hadn't played this seasonal tournament, like I, I think there is so much to take away from this exact result. And I really do want to, I'm super excited to see the top 32 this weekend because I think that's going to tell us even more, right? I think we're going to be able to see the whole thing live stream, right? Like we're going to be able to get a lot of even more details about how the the like ladder reflected the tournament meta. Um, yeah, totally. And in the future, I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure that I do a lot more prep for the seasonal tournaments as far as tournament lineup and tournament prep. 
much earlier and try to try to brew something maybe yeah work on my deck building i know i don't know about you but uh i personally am going to almost certainly just completely abandon ladder um <laughs> just, oh, really? just, yeah i'm gonna hit diamond and then like I'm, I'm gonna play a little ladder now and then because like why not but like if if i if i hit a wall i'm just gonna like yeah just not do it like it, nothing felt like it mattered i played I played less than a dozen Legends of Runeterra games in the last like month. Yeah, and then you just like, and then it didn't end up mattering gauntlet. that much. I mean, like, you got to win the gauntlet though, and that that was that was like, I mean, yeah. Other than the gauntlet is when I say because the gauntlet yeah, yeah. itself yeah. was like a dozen it, Legends of Runeterra games. It just feels like a much less consistent way to qualify. Like, I would I wouldn't recommend it, but um, I mean. It, I'm not going to literally like just swear off ladder, but I'm I'm not going to like bang my head against the wall as hard as I was. But yeah, it's it, it is nice there to like go. take the step back and be like, okay, you know, the ladder placement matters for ladder placement, but it's not necessarily a good a strong co- correlation to because also I seasonal mean, results. I know I'm not going to be the kind of ladder grinder to get to a point where an eight one's getting me. Well, like where I, like I can get good tiebreakers and qualify with seven two. Yeah, like, I tr- I, I'm gonna need an eight one no matter what. I'm I will not play that much. I tried this season and I did not get there. I was I really wanted to really make a push for the like top spots this season and I I got to about a little under three hundred LP. Like about where I peaked, it's still a lot. Um, it took me like a I, like I hit masters and then seriously played for about like a week and hit three hundred LP. And then slowly tanked off about like a hundred and somewhat of it. And then with that, at that point, there were only four or five days left for the seasonal. So it's just like, okay, well, this, it's just not going to happen. Like I just need to do it sooner and I needed to play more and I didn't and I'm mad at myself about it, but not that mad at myself because I mean, you, I don't know. You said it like the last season wasn't that fun to ladder with, but the seasonal tournament was a blast. Yo, I loved it. Yeah. I actually think is, is another great point. It's like, you know, I don't know how many people played the seasonal tournament um, or if they have a similar opinion as this, but like I didn't have that much fun laddering this last season and I had a bunch of fun playing the seasonal tournament and thinking about tournament lineups anyway. So that that's really good. Exactly. That's my takeaway as well. Yeah. Um, all right. Do you guys have anything else you want to bring up in regards to the seasonal last season uh, before we take a look at the new spoilers? I think I'm good. And new and yeah new cards baby new cards oh yeah oh yeah so so uh, i think go ahead oh Michael. sorry sorry it's a little harder to tell when you're gonna talk when i when i can't see you see yeah you. usually we have uh, this whole point thing going on but no, now i'm pointing at noble's phone you can't see me he can't see that. yeah 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 we had a good system but it's it's degraded a little bit um i definitely think we should start with the new mechanic which is lurk um and kind of talk about this was a very interesting mechanic so i think one of the in- maybe most interesting to to talk about it has the weirdest with the least analogs in in any of the mechanics that i think that they've released i am i think i would agree with that it's very bizarre yeah i have i yeah hey, let's just start <laughs> i've got stories but let's just tell the people what it is yeah so um I don't have it pulled up, so someone... I don't have the exact keyword text pulled up. I have the cards themselves, so someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Lurk says, when you attack, if there is an ally, or if there's a card on top of your deck with Lurk, all allies everywhere that have Lurk get plus one, plus O permanently. That is my understanding of that. Correct. And Uh we should probably read the actual text of the thing. Yeah. Lurk. When you attack, while I'm the card with Lurk, on top of your deck, I Lurk, granting Lurker allies everywhere plus one plus O oh, max once per round. So uh, there's matters. some things to clear, clarify here that are weird. This card is trick. This card. This mechanic was kind of hard for us to understand. Well, I got it immediately. But well, <laughs> Noble's a savant, but the rest of us idiots uh, got left behind. Yeah hard to understand because it does something that cards in like in that you just can't really do in in paper card games which is kind of like trigger from zones that neither player can see without even looking at the card right like it it doesn't say like look at the top card of your deck if it has lurk do thing it just says like if i'm on top of your deck 
do the thing. Yeah, and so it won't... So, like, both players will know if there is or is not a Lurk card on top of your deck when you attack and do or do not get a Lurk trigger, right? Yeah. Um, yes, I think so. It would be really weird if they didn't... Like, yeah. if there were no Lurk cards in your hand, like, if it had no visual indicator, it would be very weird if that was how it worked. So I, I hope it doesn't. No, you, when when you Lurk, it's gonna it's gonna do a thing. It's gonna be, like, the deep triggering... Yeah. Where like the deck like bangs up and down and makes and so, a gong noise. And so here was was the confusion for, from my end. So I read this mechanic and assumed I knew how it worked. And then a, a little bit later, uh, the champion Rek'Sai got spoiled. And spoiler alert, Rek'Sai has Lurk. Regardless, uh, I assumed that Lurk would be the card attacking would like would like be the one triggering Lurk. It's like when I attack with Lurk, look at the top. If it has Lurk, we all get plus one plus oh yay. And that is just yeah. not at all, really. That's yeah, just not, not how it works. Because you can attack with cards that don't have lurk and trigger lurk, and it'll just only it, it'll just buff the the other cards everywhere, right? Like yeah, you don't have probably. to have a lurker in play to trigger lurk, which is weird. I it think. is a little weird. Yeah, you really can, like, weird. Build up over a course of attacks, like setting up lurks, and then play a bunch of lurk units that are large. Yeah, which is very odd because I've I don't think I have. I can't think of a single other example from a card game of like a an effect triggering from the top of the deck. Really? No, I mean, yeah, it, totally. would, it would have to be exclusively a digital card game, and there's yeah. not many of those that have become very widely popular. Yeah, so, uh, totally. Uh, I guess let's let's get into some of these lurk cards. Yes, so I'm going to start with Rek'Sai because you know, champion most that exciting. Seems like a reasonable place um, to start. Rek'Sai is a three. Oh no, uh, is a three yeah, mana. Oh, wait, I, I, oh, what? Oh, never mind. You can. You should, I said I do want to talk about like the initial reaction to this mechanic and how it's hard to evaluate and a bunch of people were immediately like this sucks without actually seeing a champion which I think is like a little foolish oh like, I yeah we should say, like, we should probably address that a little bit point. first like, this, um this ahead, doesn't Noble. like read that well like you read this and you're like okay if a very specific set of circumstances line up I get to both to buff only lurkers like i have to have mostly lurkers in my deck if i want to do this naturally and lurkers are the only creatures paid off by this ability so like it's very insular like this is what will be a lurk deck right uh like you won't play just unless it's a really good costed you won't play a creature with lurk as the only lurk creature in your deck like that just won't happen because it just is going to be understated. It's it's or or it would be way too good when it got the buffs. Yeah. It also doesn't bust health, so they're still going to be fragile. Um, so just kind of in general, it's just kind of an interesting and and people like mechanic. people. Yeah, like you said, people read this mechanic and <laughs> reaction was was not super positive everybody was like oh god this is the worst i i think i I think there was a literal tweet and i don't i don't want to flame this person so i'm not going to mention their name but there was a a literal tweet that was like this is the worst mechanic that has been or will be printed in legends of runeterra for the next two years or something god i want to know their name so i can flame them Uh, i'll tell you later okay (laughs) but i don't don't want to flame them on the cast or any i mean that's fair that was a bad take but we don't we don't all need to need need to have our underwear hanging from from the the, you know (laughs) Yeah, no, 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 no. Polls, right. Like, I don't, I don't agree with that take, but like, and for what it's worth, speaking of hyperbole, given, given the cards and the mechanic that we'd seen at the time of reading that tweet, I was like, yep. I mean, okay. I agreed. <laughs> and <laughs> so like, it was, I don't think it was that hard of a take. This mechanic, I'll, I'll just fuck it. I'll just say it. This mechanic reads horribly. Like, like when, when you hadn't seen the oh, cards, yeah. I totally get it. This mechanic reads so bad. Can you imagine trying to port this mechanic over to any other game and like having it be even remotely playable? No okay. way. Here's my problem. Not even close. And I, I, I know that you, you know, and, and we, we all, everybody who said this immediately ate their shorts when, like you know the next day rolls around and we got a bunch of good ones but like you okay. know i feel like everybody's still like a little suspect of it here is the problem with the people who immediately just trashed this mechanic first of all um by my nature i if someone if everyone like rushes to hate on something <laughs> you're I'll, just gonna uh, defend it <laughs> I'll, I'll just like my knee-jerk reaction is to defend it but i did um before ever the everyone told me what people were thinking about it i did read this and all i read 
all that really stuck out to me was Grant's allies plus one plus O oh, uh, permanently. It, I just I just said I saw I read the word Grant and I was like, wait a second, this buff is permanent and it says everywhere. You are giving all of your Lakers everywhere plus one plus O oh, for the rest of the game. And I don't know. I just upon reading that, I was like, and I thought to myself, this oh, this should only need like three triggers at all to make your creatures like good, right? And at this point, yes, we had seen what one one drop. There was there were two yeah. one mana alert cards, I think. It was, oh, it was the yeah. one mana and the two mana card, and yeah. the two mana card like seemed awful, and the one mana card yeah. seemed fine or good. Yeah, we'll get into them. I mean, yeah, we'll yeah. get into them in a second, but I don't know. I also just um, automatically take a huge issue. Like everyone's saying this is the worst mechanic before we see cards for it. Yeah, it's no, it's just I, it, I like like regardless of whether of whether who's right, I don't I don't care who's right at this point. I just take a huge issue with anyone condemning anything and then saying, even though we haven't seen any cards with it yet. Yeah, it's I totally, think this yeah. is trash. It's, like, stop. It's totally fine to have a day one lurk hot take. You read the mechanic lurk. It's totally fine to be like, this shit is going to be garbage and tweet it. You could tweet it. Sure, that's fine. You know, you can have your day one hot lurk takes. Put it on the, you know, make a YouTube video. Clickbait the thumbnail. Lurk is the worst mechanic ever. Sure. Right? Like, you could do this, but like, you have to, you have to do it with a grain of salt like there's no way you can you can just be like you can have takes as as stone cold as like this is the worst mechanic ever after seeing with two cards like you know everybody is going to want to know what you think after reading the mechanic obviously it's okay to have to be like i'm not sold on this yet but like i'm not sold on this yet is like about as about as far negative as i feel like you should go yeah. uh, i mean and and the, the community likes to have its hot takes and, and that's totally fine yeah like the biggest thing that stuck out for me is like when this Buildwater card had it and i was like oh and um you know echo's probably not going to have it uh echo's probably going to be predict based based on the pnz cards that we've seen um but it's like oh two we're getting two thing things with this mechanic i don't even know if that's something that's happened before like we've had two champions that synergize together like soraka and tom kent but we haven't had like literally two things in the same set with the same mechanic from two regions i guess nightfall is an example of that but that was in a bigger set so it was a little less noticeable um, hey we don't know that pike has lurk yeah but i do think that it's he will pretty, but... <laughs> pretty likely there, there's yeah. just no like, way he won't the like the given... thing is that like the the um the little uh the icon is like a shark fin in water and like oh, that's also that's the what horns it is. of the Rex size air side things. I thought it was what like a little mage hat, and I was? was so confused. It looks like it looks like a little mage, like a blue like mage hat. Um, it's printed on like fish cards from Bilgewater. I it it didn't. I looked at it and I was like, I was like, okay, this doesn't make any sense. And then immediately moved Wait, on. Did you not connect it. No, I thought it was like a little. I thought it was like a little mage hat, and I was like, "That's a dumb symbol for this." And then moved on. I will admit, (laughs) I will admit that upon looking at it once more, I could totally see it being a witch's hat. Yeah, it looks like it. You're not wrong. It does kind of look like. If I'd given it a single second thought, I would have arrived. I would have arrived at the the conclusion that it's ridiculous. I just thought it was a bad symbol and moved on. Okay, I (laughs) certainly hope you would have realized it. Anyway, we should probably get to the cards themselves. Yeah, totally. But, um, but like there are two. But what I was saying is that there are two champions to come. Like, of course, the mechanic doesn't look good with the two commons. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, we'll see what the champions do with it for sure. Anyway, Rexai is a three mana, three six, with lurk, as we said. Um, yeah. She says, when I lurk or attack, grant lurker allies everywhere plus one plus zero, oh. round end. Yeah. What? Shuffle me back into the deck. Uh, uh, Noble just said something. And I was. Oh. Oh, I didn't. I just moved the thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Sorry, I wasn't got it. All right. Um, Grant Lurker Allies everywhere, plus one, plus so. Round end, place me into your deck. And she levels when she's attacked with 10 plus power. Just... Yep. yep. And then levels into a 4-7. Four, four, seven. Seven. Four, seven. A 4-7 four, with Overwhelm. Yep. And notably, she, does, she no longer 
shuffles herself back into your deck at the end of the round. Yes. And when she levels up, you create three random lurker allies in your hand. Yeah, you draw three cards. Yeah, that's a pretty big text. Not only draw three cards, you draw three payoffs for the mechanic that you have spent time setting up. Exactly. Like this and uh, Rek'Sai's champ spell, um, which you should read probably before I, so I don't just say it. Yeah, uh, Rek'Sai's champ spell is Call the Pack. It's two mana burst, and the spell itself has Lurk, which is very cool. Um, Very cool. To play, put a card from your hand on top of your deck. And it says, create two random lurker followers in hand. Yeah. So, so this, like, this if you is put... such an important glue. Like, so what we said before is that you have to play so many lurk cards in your deck to have the payoff and to have the setup. But with these, you can play less, set it up with predict, and then create the lurk payoffs and not necessarily have to play all of them with this card in Rek'Sai herself. And the nice thing about Lurk is that it doesn't matter what the card is. You can just slap Lurk on anything because yeah, it, totally. it doesn't matter. It just uh, all it is is seeing, does the card on top of my deck have Lurk? Yes yeah, totally. or no. And that's yeah. all that matters. Yeah, when, which is cool. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I guess. And, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Noble. Finish your thought. Well, I, I just wanted to say um, a very cool. I think that one of the one of the. Um, one of the problems with understanding what this mechanic did, which maybe not everyone had, but we had a little talk in our chat about, um, was that since that Rex, so it triggers only once, but if Rex is the thing, if she is on top of your deck, they get two bonuses. And then also when she attacks, you get the bonus. So it kind of whole thing collaborates to make looking at Rex, you're like, oh, she says when I attack, basically lurk an additional time which then connects in the brain to when the lurkers attack is when the thing happens but i really like the flavor of the mechanic of like when a thing is lying in wait your guys get better okay. and like that rex eye basically tunnels again at the end of your turn so she's very hard to kill because she has six health and you'd have to put, do all of the damage in one turn before she tunnels and regens which is really cool um and I just think a really, really neat interaction. I've been very impressed with the design of this whole set. Like, even just learning what the mechanic was and realizing Echo was probably Predict and Pike and uh, Rek'Sai were probably Lurk, those Predict and Lurk work really well together. Like, the whole thing just felt really elegant to me, and I was, like, sick. Very into it. Yeah, so the next card is... Uh, oh, we gotta, we gotta talk about how good this Rek'Sai card is real quick first. Oh, that's fair. I, I think because I, I don't know. Noble caught in on the got in on the flavor, but I want I want to weigh in on how good is this card? Three mana, three oh, six. Yeah. So <laughs> this is I, I think I think I'm gonna I think this is maybe the card I am the most. This might be the card I've been the most indecisive about. Like like the most split. My my internals are so split on whether or not this card is good or unplayable. Um. And I'm I'm really so my first reaction, I read the card, I was like, shuffle me in an end of round. Holy god, this card is completely unplayable. Was my like my, my like first read through was like yep. was like three mana, three six, round and shuffle me in. I almost didn't even care what the rest of it. I was like, the the level up ability better win the game. <laughs> Basically was what I said. Because I was like, getting this Rex Eye to ten power is going to be impossible. Like, is going to be so and to be fair, the level up kind of does win the game. And the level up is good. The level up is make three, make three ran like draw three cards and like have a big thing. And That's she really good. at this point has overwhelm, which is notable. Yeah, and at least yeah, ten power. Attacking. So you are at that point attacking with an eleven power overwhelm unit. Yeah. So yeah, no, the 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 problem is getting there. Can you actually get there? Yeah, totally. I I don't know what your guys' predictions are, but I. Th- I think I'm I think I'm going to say that I don't I don't think it's going to get there. I I hate to say it. And I mean like maybe maybe I'll change my mind if we see like Pike and some more a little bit more lurk payoffs. Like we don't have all the cards right now just yet, but I think that it's just not quite going to get there. I mean, I I can't really imagine playing this card on turn 3 
pretty much ever, almost. It feels like the absolute best card for Rek'Sai to be, or the best place for Rek'Sai to be is on top of your deck, so that you get plus two, plus zero when you lurk, basically, because that is how that that this card works. Is when she attacks, you want you want something else with lurk on top, or when lurkers attack if rek'sai is on top you get an additional plus one plus oh because when rek'sai lurks that means that rek'sai has to be the card on top of your deck not the card attacking you get plus one plus one plus oh. but also when rek'sai attacks when also rek'sai when rek'sai attacks she'll get plus one plus oh and then lurk so yeah. like if yeah. you if you happen to hit a lurker you'll get plus two plus oh while rek'sai's in play but like if you don't hit a lurker and attack with rek'sai your board will get plus one plus oh if you attack with a lurker and hit rek'sai on top your everything will get plus two plus oh because rek'sai is the card lurking yeah yep. it's very very strangely worded so that is very strangely yeah, worded. that was that was how i this because was, rek'sai is giving plus one plus oh and then lurk the keyword is giving plus one yes, plus oh correct yes, because when rek'sai lurks when a card lurks that means not that it triggered lurk that it was the card on top of the deck that yeah, because in the little lurk. ability, it says when I'm on top of your deck, when you attack, yeah, so I the, lurk. There's a couple yeah. interesting things. W the first thing is, if you attack and trigger Rek'Sai, then both players know that Rek'Sai is on top of uh, the, your deck. the yeah. deck, right? Yeah. That's kind of interesting. Good to know, I think. Um, so I guess keep an eye out for that on day one. Also, uh, like, man, I don't know. You guys help me. Help me out here. Do you guys think that, that this card is good? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Um, sell, sell me, please. So first of all, I, I'm I mean, leaning it's bad. Yeah. So. Um. I mean, you can play it on turn three, and like, you don't have to play it with the attack token that turn. Like, it's it's just a three mana three six. Like, you're happy. It'll, it'll get shuffled back. It gets shuffled in. So you won't get a turn. Yeah. Effect. That that's fair. It, it is on turn three. It is huge. So so like to be fair, you can play it when they have the attack token, and it I, might I, just like fog their whole. It might they might just pass because they don't want to get their biggest thing eaten by this three right. six that's gonna die. And that's anyway. like the worst case scenario. <laughs> for you as the yeah. person playing Rek'Sai kind of like that's like the worst yeah. place to play her yeah. like and then she's probably gonna attack she's gonna minimum going to attack as a 4-6 right yeah yeah she attacks as 4-6 at and least he literally attacks four, yeah six. exactly so and also um I don't think it's unreasonable to have her trigger plus two plus so more often than not given we have a decent like critical mass of lurk cards yeah yeah we we do we actually do already have a decent amount. Huh. This card is this card is so hard. What do you think, Noble? Yeah, I agree that it's pretty good. We we know that there are at least uh, two, probably three more Bilgewater lurkers coming. Which if if three of the followers are lurkers, um, then Pike almost certainly has lurk. So we we definitely have a good indication that there will be some critical mass. Like I said, I think her champ spell is very powerful. Just the effect for two burst, create two units on theme for my deck, and put a unit back, which you and put a card back, which you actively want because you you want to put lur the lurker back. The champ spell is so many miles better to me in than the three mana burst card that puts a card from your hand shuffled into your deck and then predicts and then make, makes a copy of the predicted card because that card predicts and and creates a card this card puts the card you want back on top and makes two cards for less mana i'm i am not I nearly like as sold on this card as you you are i think that it's medium i i think i think that making two random lurkers is not gonna be that good a lot of the time i disagree you, yeah. i i don't know i mean like i've already seen some of these lurkers and some of them are pretty bad like <laughs> i mean that's fair i, I just and, think it's gonna be a very very crucial glue portion yeah and that's why i'm so torn on this is because like i don't know these glue cards don't seem that good none of the units seem that efficiently statted like rexi shuffles herself back in like how is is this really all going to piece together into a plan that can reasonably win a game like what you know is your is your aggressive plan really going to play you play these one toughness lurk dudes and hope that they don't get battle feasted. Like I just don't think that's gonna not, get not there. Not that many of them have one toughness, and, and we have. So the reason I said that we have build water ones to come is because in the video when Rex like levels up, there are, are lurk cards that with the build water symbol shown at yeah. one, two, and eight costs that aren't the same as the two cost one that was revealed. So we're like pretty for more are coming, um, and, and at least some low cost ones. And and honestly, I think that like maybe we can have like a deck where all of your units are like. Rune Runner, Merciless Hunter, and then the Lurkers. Um, 
my biggest concern about the yeah. lurk package is is if you are going to be able to reasonably play an aggressive lurk curve and the spell support needed to set it up like are you going to have enough mana to be able to to play all of your threats and set it up and do it all cuz like even if you get a lurk turn on the first like on turn 1 you let's say turn 1 you have a one drop and hit a lurk turn 3 you play Rek'Sai, hit some lurks or whatever and then like turn 5 like by turn 5 it, the most you can have is like three lurks really right like well sure i don't i don't think this is an aggro mechanic i think it's a mid range mechanic interesting yeah so and the reason i think that is um for this a similar reason why uh Avarosan trapper is a good card the one <laughs> That makes the, the Yeti three on top. Three, three that makes a Yeti. Yeah, it makes a Yeti. Yeah, because a one mana five five that it makes is such a massive tempo swing, and um, yeah. these cards on like turn five or six, you're suddenly gonna dump like two or three of these into your hand, and they're gonna yeah. be under a uh, very large and very under costed at that point in the game, and all of a sudden you like you're controlling the board a little bit, like you've got your like random stat sticks that a min range deck is going to have you're going to have your random like let's say your demacia or something like yeah. that you've got your whatever region you are you probably got some kind of removal you probably like made some made an efficient trade or two or made a good removal shot or two and like killed some of the things their board's a little worse than yours then all of a sudden with five mana you put like 15 power in play maybe not yeah. 15 like 12 or 10 maybe, it yeah. could just be 10 i don't know like i i i think that the potential tempo swing in turns like five to seven are like huge um and that's where i see lurk thriving i don't see it as a super aggressive mechanic because the whole point is that it needs time set up and aggro decks need to curve out from turn one um well the really fast ones do yeah but. so at least this yeah, probably won't maybe have it's a little more like that. Nightfall, where you have like really impactful turns. Right, in the exactly. Mid -game, yeah, as and opposed you, to like really beating down. Yeah, and its plan is to not like beat down from turn one, but its plan is to turn the corner on turn five and kill you then. Yeah, and you know it might not really be that hard to, you know, predict a Rexi on top, get like, you know, one Rexi lurk trigger, one normal lurk trigger, and then like Rexi attacks. And then you like shape stone it or something and flip it like that. That isn't that unreasonable, you know? Yeah, totally. To be able to like flip um, yeah. Rex Eye and that that like once you flip Rex Eye, like she's really good. <laughs> she's really good once you flip her. But like you know, the problem is yeah. keeping her in play is is kind of hard. Yeah. And, like right. that's pretty get bad against like vengeances and hushes or whatever. Yeah. Um, we should probably uh, talk, talk about, about cards. yeah, talk yes. about the, the rest of these boys. So I'm gonna just hit the rest of the lurk cards we've seen yeah. real quick before yeah, just, we get into just give the, us the lurk package yeah so the next lurk card is a five mana two six with lurk um it says attack if i have eight plus power give me fearsome overwhelm and spell shield this round my word that's a lot of keywords yeah so basically if it hits eight plus power it's just an absolute monstrosity and is going to kill you yeah it's just huge in the end game but boy is it so much mana for a two six right and and i think so basically I, when i'm looking at these cards the way i'm evaluating uh not just the keyword but like the cards themselves is i'm thinking on average how many lurk triggers do i need before i'm happy to play these cards yeah and i and it seems like three, three. i think three yeah. is like is like the answer for like almost all of them yeah exactly that's oh, where yeah. i'm at as well so it's like a five minute five minute five six that has the ability to get better all right yeah uh, yeah totally like I'd, I'd play that card probably it's probably not even that great but like it's probably worse than screeching dragon on the rate but like you know i'd be i'd be reasonably happy to play that card as and, a five minute five, five six five minute five six is very it's large huge. in this game. It's huge. Let's yeah. not forget about the fact that it is huge. Bigger than old inspiring Marshall, and that card got both more expensive and like and less yeah. health. But like, but you know, yeah. a big part of how good car that card was was the body being very hard to interact with. Absolutely right. So, so at that point, like, unlike like Screaming Dragons, a four five for five. But when it's a five six, you don't need Challenger. It's gonna kill their board anyway. Yeah, this card is not yeah. super impressive to me. I think like like I I the spell shield I overwhelm thing. Like you only get it when you attack. So even if it is huge, like you can just you can just like vengeance it before then if you're gonna need to. Like if you have a removal spell for it, you can just cast it at a different time. Like it's not like it's gonna be immune to removal spells. Yeah, I think um, uh, it doesn't permanently get spell shield, which is a big deal. So yeah. 
this um this card the triggering is like if you've triggered it then like you deserve to win the game but i don't expect it to trigger that often yeah which is why i just am not that high on it i guess um and you know i could very easily see us just being wildly wrong and lurk is like very consistently triggered yeah absolutely um and like by turn five you're like no i shouldn't say easily because you need to attack to trigger lurk yeah but it um, seems it seems very unreliable to have three like uh, like if you're if you have attack token on turn one you're just always going to have to have one drop and get lucky if you want to have three yeah. lurks by turn five right so like but they are uh there are as we know plenty of ways to attack that are not the turns you have the attack yeah. token oh i want to say the I, I should have brought this up earlier with Lurk, but the last thing I want to bring up about Lurk that, it, that concerns me greatly is how often am I going to have to make an attack that is not that good and just hope that I hit Lurk? Like, like how often am I going to have to attack my 2-3 into their 3-3 three, three or whatever and hope to hit a Lurk? Like, am I going to have to do that in this deck? Like, Because that feels like that might be like a pretty common play pattern where you just like kind of jam and hope you hit Lurk. Yeah. And if you don't, you get a like wrecked. Like if that if that ends up happening a lot, that's something I'm very worried about with Lurk. It's like how often am I just gonna have to blind attack and hope to get there? And like how many games is that gonna decide? <laughs> like I'm worried totally. about that. I feel like, like the answer to that question is um, more cards. Sorry, what was that? I just said more cards because I think it'll be easier to talk about them once we have them all. Sure. Very, yeah. very, very probably true. Yeah. So the next card is. Uh, Six mana, three six with lurk and overwhelm, and that's it. Yeah. It's just it just has overwhelm. It's a three six, cost six. It's big. Yeah, it, once again, we're gonna need three lurks at least for this card to be good. I mean, Four for it to be literal alpha wild claw. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. alpha wild claw is technically constructed playable. I mean, so. I I will say that every single time my opponent has played an alpha wild claw against me. I I can't remember the last time that card has been played against me and I haven't died. Yeah, it's either useless yeah. or wins the game. There's not really an in between <laughs> with yeah. that one. I think this I mean this card has to be solidly worse than Alpha Wild Claw. Like Oh, it should be. Th this card must be much worse than Alpha Wild Claw and that card is like fringe constructed playable and only really in one deck because they're trying to abuse overwhelm. I I have very low very low hopes for this card too. To yeah, be honest. if this card is consistently better than Alpha Wild Claw, Lurk and is then terrifying. Yeah, 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 yeah. In that case, I yeah, want to I want to talk about that one mana with <laughs> one with fierce. Well, more. even like if you think about it, like once you've gotten three lurk triggers, this is better in your deck than Alpha Wild Claw because you wanted it in your deck so that it triggered lurk being sure. in your deck. Does that make sense? Yeah, like it it's part of the critical mass there. But yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean. Um, uh, the next card is a three mana two three with lurk and play predict. That's it. This so, one's good. This one feels like glue. Yeah, this one's got to be good, right? It's a three mana, two, three, two mana, two, three, three right. mana, two, three. So like it's a little understated, but like that's kind of the point of all these. Yeah, yeah. There, we're obviously going to need to do some. So like this card, however, like so, right? There's a Xenotype Researchers. Is that the card? Xenotype Chroniclers, something like that. Yeah. Is it the two mana, two, three that plays and predicts? No, um, Xenotype Researcher is, is the, the three, three mana, mana, three, three that. that Gives all the things in your deck plus three, what's plus the three, what's the two mana two three that that plays predict there there's a two mana two three chronomancer. Oh, the aspiring, aspiring chronomancer aspiring chronomancer thank yeah. you so i mean if we we can do a pretty direct comparison here right so we're paying one extra mana for lurk yes uh that might be worth it yeah i don't i don't hate it yeah it, it seems like it probably should be worth it in theory like it'll be much worse in the early game but it should be much better in the later game so like yeah, totally. And like, you know, if I get two triggers on this one, I'm pretty happy with the body plus the predict in my deck. Like, yeah, definitely. Because like, it feels like, yeah, the predict in theory should set up a lurk. So like, this should just be a 3-3 three, three, almost all the time. However, I guess if you're predicting a lurker, then you're like kind of losing out on a lot of the predict value because you maybe had to pick a lurker. But, which but is like, kind of an interesting thing you want to be drawing lurkers is kind of the idea right yeah in theory in theory but like you know you are giving up some of that versatility of predict if you're trying to put lurkers on top because you know odds are you know you might hit two lurkers and get to pick the better of them or something but most of the time you're probably going to hit like one lurker and just like auto click the lurker or whatever and i mean we'll fair. see it's also worth noting that you can't predict on a turn you're not attacking because you'll just draw the lurker yeah which is kind, which of, is kind of unfortunate but like yeah Anyway, the next card is a two mana zero two with lurk that says play. I start a free attack. Oh, those are good words, baby. 
we all know how much free attacks uh, can do. Yeah, I like the, uh, I like, the, it's like, time for spoiler season. The first card says, I start a free attack. <laughs> it's like, Everyone just, like, instantly has PTSD. Yeah, <laughs> room's uh, on fire. Well, like, like, uh, I do think this card is not that good. It's It'll be nice for turning off Lyric. Like, I don't think you can really, like, raw dog this card on turn two. I don't know if you can just, like, jam it out and, like, hope to hit something. So and I've then got, be attacking with a one-two as your payoff. Like, that's not. Yeah, so, so here's the, the thing. Like, what if your opponent just, like, has a unit? And you yep. play this thing, yep. and then it starts a free attack by itself yep. and gets eaten by yeah. anything. Yep. This card sucks. Yeah, I don't this think. This card is wildly unplayable, I think. Just like a- a- actual F tier garbage. I'm not going to go that far. I-, I think we might put it in the Bill Twitter Lurk deck. Sh- that is why I think this deck it might be bad. <laughs> is because if we have to play cards <laughs> like this in that deck, it's going to be bad. That's my- that's where I'm at. That's basically where I'm at with Lurk. Like. I was like, I, I do not love any of these Lurk cards. I said the same thing about the Blade Dance cards. They ended up being really good. Like, I don't, I'm not sure, you know, obviously we haven't seen all the Lurk cards quite yet, but like this Lurk card, I'm not putting this Lurk card in my deck. And if I have to, I'm not going to play the deck. All right. I can't <laughs> wait for Alex to be catastrophically wrong. It's heard, usually You heard it here yeah. first, folks. Lurk is insane because he hates it. Maybe, I don't hate Lurk. I hate that card. That's fair. That card kills card itself insane. on every turn after turn one. I'm not. It just, it just insta dies. <laughs> I don't actually believe this card is insane, but I do think this card is actually potentially very good it, yeah. it already it has to attack it I'm has aware. to kill itself i mean that's the upside <laughs> that's not upside no, 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 i'm not saying i'm not saying the upside is it kills itself i'm saying the upside is the attack i i, I know we've all seen yeah. how free attacks are so exploitable so unbelievably exploitable are you gonna put emperor's dais in your lurker whatever what is that card even called <laughs> uh snapjaw swarm are you gonna put emperor's dais in your snapjaw swarm deck I mean, or like a yeah. mirror. Wait, wait, because it works with MF too. Oh baby, oh baby. Yeah, yeah, that sounds awful. All right, next one. <laughs> anyway, the next one is uh, Zersai Hatchling. It's a one mana one one with fearsome and lurk. This so, one's way yeah. better. Yeah, this. Yeah, this one you need like two triggers. So the the last card was in Buildwater, but this card's in Shirima. Every just... all all of the lurkers are in Shirima except for the Snapjaw, the start of free attack so guy. Hard. They're all, um, they're all Xerasai creatures. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the one mana, one, one fearsome lurk. This is, this feels like more of what the effect, like the effect I want. You know, it's not, it, it's obviously pretty fragile, but at least it's a one mana lurk thing that I want to play on turn one. It's got fearsome. It's going to be able to attack on turn one and two most of the time. Try and mize your triggers. To me, this card kind of feels like the dreg dredgers of lurk. Like, it's just going to be really good clue. It's, it's totally going to be a good it. card you want in your opening hand every game, probably. And, you know, you're just expecting it to try and start you doing your thing. You're not really going to get the full cards or the value from it a lot of the time. And if you can, you like throw a party. I'm going to be very curious to see if we end up with a Lurk deck that is uh, Shirima Shadow Isles because you just really, really want. Um, why can I never remember the name of this card? Shadow. Shadow Clone. Shadow. Stalking oh, shadows. Stalking shadows. <laughs> it's shadow always in jutsu. my head. In my head, it is always shadow clone jutsu. It's always shadow clone jutsu. <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> that's so. That's way sicker. We should call it that. For, I'm gonna steal that from now on. That's a way better name. Um, I'm thinking about times where, like, because you know, Stygian onlooker is just such a horrifying card on like turn four when they go, you know, make an extra, and they just play three Stygian onlookers, and you're like, and you're staring down twelve fearsome oh, power. God. Yeah. <laughs> That's more yeah, totally. that's more what I'm hoping to happen with this card instead of just a one mana one one that's hopefully a two one on turn one. Hope yeah. like precious pet that can get bigger. If it's which precious is, pet which is that fine. can get bigger, like that, that is precious, a raving review. Yeah, exactly. Precious pet is like one of my favorite cards in the game, actually. Um That's a good take. Anyway. I uh, love Precious Pet. We have three more cards. Um I'll start with the I think the uh, this is the only PNZ card. The only PNZ card nope. we've seen so far. Yeah. Uh, one mana, two one. Fallen feline. Uh, when I'm summoned, create a hexite crystal in the bottom ten cards of your deck. Hexite crystal is a two mana fast spell that says if you see me in a prediction, draw me, and deal two and en- uh, deal two to enemies and the enemy nexus. 
I looked at this card and was like, what are they doing? Why did they print this? And because I thought before the card that created it, and then, you know, the classic, like, oh, thank God it's a created card. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I also saw, this was the very first card I saw when I opened up spoilers for that day. And I was like, what yeah. in the hell is this? Yeah, so my my instinct, my inclination here is that that card is not good. But if Echo and the rest of the PNZ support has similar predict mechanics and even similar like shuffle good cards in if you see me, like if more cards have the if you see me while predicting draw me text yeah. like I'm, I'm all in I, I think I like this card that effect is insanely good if there's enough hits to where it's worth it for me to play like this card and maybe like one more that's shuffling something in and then like some predict package and echo like I'm going to be here for it. I think like drawing a and card while you're predicting is does very that. powerful. You don't, you don't draw the time bombs, but he, but they, they do replace themselves. So yeah. they kind of do that. This card's like better um, than time bomb though. Like, yeah, I don't, uh, way better. yeah, I don't think this card's going to be particularly good. Um, but you know, that's, it's the, not, that's the big grain of salt take. Yeah. For it's, now. Not, it's not an all-star or anything. I, I don't think this card's busted. I don't even think it's playable right now. I just, I just think it's close. Like, I think I just need a little more help and then I'm, I'm going to so, maybe totally. try this. Do we card. think that, um, there will be more cards that create this specific card? That's an interesting question. I, it, that seems pretty possible to be honest, instead of creating different cards with different effects that say, if predicted draw me, they might just all create this. That yeah. would be cool and, and if interesting. that's true, then once again, I am I am in. Like like these little mini go heart, these mini packer bags are going to be very good in Piltover and Zon, where they have a bunch of damage based removal. Like dealing totally. two to everything is going to help a lot. Like clean up all the small stuff that you don't want to have to Mystic Shot. You can save your big removal spells for the champions. Then like I think it would go a long way because PNZ really just like one of its biggest problems is that it has all spot removal and no sweepers. Yeah, so other like, than like asterisk static shock <laughs> yeah, st <laughs> not even static shock oh <laughs> uh, that's the best I'll they got i'm gonna say this card compares pretty favorably to static shock half as much mana twice as much damage to everything and hits nexus also draws a card draws itself yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um next card is from shrima is very simple zero mana burst feral prescience predict i don't know why i'm saying the title after like the stats it's called Feral yeah. Prescience. It's zero mana burst and predicts. I forgot this one existed. Maybe this is good to play I don't think early so. for the lurkers. Ugh. I'm gonna <sighs> say no. I I this is another one. We've of those seen how like that I really have to hope the lurk deck does not have to play this card. We've seen how like incredibly medium aspiring Chronomancer is. Yeah, and that's a like, it's a two mana two three like a an body a, a very reasonable on rate body that also has predict how. How are we ever going to justify putting zero mana burst predict? The only way you could ever justify it is uh, if you have Rek'Sai in your deck and you're lurking, I think, because you could theoretically play zero mana like double vision or whatever. Like if you put Rek'Sai on top, that'd sure. be pretty good. But then you have to hit Rek'Sai. Sometimes you're just going to miss. Like I, th this is like I said, this is another card that I really hope the lurk decks don't have to play. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like I really hope that we can play better cards than this and our deck will function. I, I actually just here really yeah okay because all right so here's my thought process right the the reason aspiring chronomancer is bad is because you have to play two two unit mana for it like i don't think predicting is necessarily worth a card but it is very important setup and definitely when it finds the next side it is um and i think a lot of legends ruin terror games are one with multiple other cards in your hand. Like, I, I don't think going down a card is that big of a cost if it's a powerful setup. So I, I don't think you want to ever play this in, like, a mid-range or something, but, like, when you have very important synergies, like, lurking to set up, and like you said, now we don't have to try to blind flip on turn one or two. Like, a zero-mana setup card is very, very... is very important in all of the things that we've just said, and, like, you want to hit it on one that three and five like so you're not having to pay mana to set up your payoff is a big deal i'm not particularly convinced that the problem of we have enough like like most legends of runeterra games have enough cards is going to 
ring true if on turn one you play a one mana one one and then zero mana like you're gonna have two cards in your hand after turn one like if you play three like because you drew a card yeah, for three turn. to draw a card but that that's not a lot <laughs> like, like you're already yeah. almost out like you're gonna have four cards at the start of turn two you're all if you you know if you just play it two, like you're gonna run out of cards in that game i think so <laughs> That that's fair enough, especially if you have like a wreck side that's shuffling yourself back. Yeah, yeah, deck. like yeah. For example, if you do the the nuts thing where you you know you're like, all right, turn one. Here's the I can't remember the name of it. The one mana one one with fearsome and lurk. It's like zero side hatchling or something. Yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, and then you know you predict and you put rex eye on top and attack and then you hit them for three and everything's glorious and then draw your rex eyes. Like, okay, yeah, but like you know, what if they just like vile feast it and now we have three random cards and a Rek'Sai that shuffles back in. It's going to be pretty hard to win a fair game of Legends of Runeterra with that most of the time, I think. Yeah, that's so, fair. That's fair enough, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sold on this one, but, like, maybe. maybe. Yeah. So our last card uh, sparked quite a bit of controversy in our group chat. Oh, yeah. This was <laughs> this was an 80 messenger. Yeah. Uh, this one, this one sparked a war. I literally looked down at our group chat and, and saw 85 unread messages said, I'm not reading this. <laughs> And then just closed yeah, we'll, the group chat we'll and talk it out. continued working because I was just like, I'm not, I'm not doing this. And it turns out, um, it was all about this card. Uh, it's called careful preparation, three mana burst from Shrima to play, place a card from your hand into your deck, predict, then create an exact copy of the chosen card in your hand. Okay. I, I love this card. You personally. love it. I, yeah. lo I love this card. I don't know. I'm not going to go as so far as to say it's like amazing or anything, but I definitely love this card. <laughs> um, I do think it's, I'm leaning definitely more towards good. Towards good. Where are you at on this card, so Noble? You, so you, want, you want to spend three mana to go down a card instead of spending zero mana to go down a card? Wait, why, why is this, isn't this card neutral? No, because you're, you're oh. taking a card and you're, you're taking it and a card from your hand and you're putting the card in your hand back in your deck. Yeah. And the card out of your hand. Yeah. And then you predict. Draw two cards. And then you draw one card no. and put a card on top. And then draw it for your next turn. Because you predict it. So you get one copy of the card. I see. I yeah. see. So it, this is three mana and it is minus one card. In my head, uh, you predicted the card and then you you just also drew the card. But it's just, it's, yeah. it's like you are yeah, drawing the card. But it's still, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think. It okay. It would be a lot better if it was Talking Shadows. Yeah. So, I mean, I get the idea here. Like it, it, you know, it, it makes it your worst you... card into presumably a very good card and maybe not very good. You only get to look at three cards. So into a good card, presumably, and then, you know, puts a good card on top of your deck, but it's three mana. And this is, uh, I, I will say that given that it is now functioning differently than I thought in my head, it is definitely worse. Yeah, I don't think this card is good. I, I, I hate to say it. I, I know some people were really high on this one, and the first time I read it, I thought it was nuts, and then I thought about it a little more. This is a card that I could see decks playing one or two of. Like, I, I, I think that in, I don't know, Noble said it a little bit earlier where he was saying, like, the average Legends of Runeterra deck usually has a slot or two to go to play a card negative card and i agree with that like, i do agree that 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 is true and I, I i made a little bit of a point of it with the zero mana card but like you know that that's really a, i feel like made worse by the fact that you're playing all those cards so quickly because this card you're not going to play until later in the game right and you're probably not going to play it in a deck that is trying to be particularly aggressive right it's probably in a lurker deck most of the time but it's going to be a slower so like i think that it, the fact that it's three spell mana is a big deal because yeah if it was more than three spell mana i it just even if it was better, I'd probably be completely off it. Like same. There's just I mean, three is a lot of mana, and three is a lot of mana. Like, but the only reason I'm I'm even willing to talk about it, I think, is because it is exactly three mana, and you can play it with spell mana. And the ability to do it at any time with spell mana is kind of nice. I think most Legends of Runeterra games, especially the mid range year decks, can afford to play at least one minus card advantage plus card selection card. Right, like. It seems totally reasonable. You know, the, this card does cool things. Like, it, you can, like, insta-level your zillion type of thing uh, with by, like, copying time bomb some amount of the time. That's pretty cool. And then you play the time bomb, draw the time bomb, play the time bomb. So if you have enough mana for all that, that's pretty cool. Um, I don't think that's particularly good. I don't think it's particularly good either. But it's cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I think somebody's going to have to show me why this card is broken. This I, card just feels like it could have been, like, two mana 
or like probably not one, but like since it's card negative, like and just card selection, like it's like I don't know. Yeah, and that maybe this maybe there'll maybe we have like enough support that you know we can play like xenotype researchers the one that gives plus three plus three to random allies because like you know if you happen to see the card that got plus three plus three and then make an exact copy of it and have it on top of your deck like that's gonna start to be pretty absurd probably yeah i just oh, that, that, that's fair. i see this card and i think about um decks that uh operate off of like one or two like very very essential cards like zoe lee and like uh tlc something or maybe probably not thresh nasus but maybe um cards that like can one draw thing you said probably not this but maybe is the only one that can play this card because of the regions <laughs> just gonna point that out <laughs> fair um wait oh yes because of how regions work god damn it <laughs> Uh -huh. um, yeah, but it, like I do think the the amount of card selection here is is very relevant and there will be decks that exist that do value that enough um it's definitely a lot less good than I thought it was <laughs> the, Damn. the fact that it, so this card also does something that no other legends rune Terra card okay that's not quite true that few other legends rune Terra cards do which is let you no. see your deck and then draw that card that turn immediately. Well, that, and also that, like, yeah, it's burst speed, so you can, like, be like, well, I really need Withering Whale. Thank God there's Withering Whale or the box or whatever. Yeah, you can you can look for the thing you need at exactly when you need it every time. At burst speed. Yeah, which the, is pretty the, good. The, but what I was going to say was, if you find a champion, now there are four copies of that champion between your hand and your deck. Oh, well, that is interesting. The I feel like the biggest problem with this card for me, like pretty is, good with rack side. That's all I was going to say about. It, but is that the you the problem is that it's bad with champions. Like it's innately bad with champions because the champ spells are almost always worse than the champion. And rack size champ spell is really good. It, it is good and is good with rack size. So like. That's something that is actually real. Like, I think is like maybe if you're finding exactly Rek'Sai with this, I'm here for it. But like most of the time, the champ spell is much worse than the champion. So like it's it's kind of innately a non bow with finding champions. But you want to find your champions with your predict because like they're usually the best card in your decks. Eh, maybe you just do it anyway because your champs are so good. Whatever. Yeah, I've, I've I have been very unimpressed with predict still. Yeah, it just never. It just never works. That I just well. want it to be good, but it just never just feels like it wins. <laughs> You're never like, oh, thank God, I predicted the perfect card, and now I win the game. Like that just doesn't happen very much. No. I don't think it's three yeah. cards out of your like you know thirty that are left or twenty five. Yeah, most of the time you just like pick the four drop because it's turn three and you need a four drop next turn or whatever. <laughs> you yeah. know, like predict hasn't helped me that very much at all. I've just never been that excited to trigger predict ever yeah maybe that'll change once we have like lurk and potentially this uh the pnc mechanic where we're pulling things out of our deck because like if i get to predict and draw a card and put a card on top of my deck like now we're talking like now i'm i'm here to predict you know but if otherwise yeah this card strikes me as not generically good but maybe good with zillion maybe good with echo maybe good with rex maybe yeah. good with pike I, I yeah if it finds a home it'll be very good in its home I think that's fair. I, I think it might just I don't know. I think if it finds a home, it's probably still just going to be like a two of because you just can't play that many of this effect. But like, it'll probably be a. I predict I predict that I will lose a game to this card. All right. I, I predict it will be good enough to, to win games. Uh, Is that that's all of them, right? Yeah. OK, awesome. So uh, that brings us to the end of spoilers, at least for now, which means it's time to get into our listener questions for the week. Uh, our question of the week this time comes from Karenol. They ask, why is Draven the best designed champion? Which I think is perfectly timed for our spoiler season remarks on champions. Absolutely. So let's start with uh, is it, Draven the yeah, best this, designed this champion? This started with. Uh, I think he posted he like posted a question that was like, is Draven the best designed champion? And then I, I was like, I looked at the the discord and I was I was going to be like, I was thinking, thinking, thinking. Yeah, I think it is. And then you came in and you were like, yes, I think it is. And then I think Noble said the same thing, too. So, like, why? Why do we think that? Well, uh, my initial thoughts were that one, it's just a very, very like good body. You're never 
you're never unhappy to play this card. Like you're yep. never like you're never like, oh man, I gotta play this Draven. Like you're always happy to play Draven. He will always get some even if it's small, he will get some amount of value by virtue of creating his little spinning axe. Yep. There are as we know, there are plenty of decks that exploit that by trying to like rummage away the axes, turn them into real cards. Um he synergizes with himself very well. Absolutely. Despite being a champion that most people say like that very rarely levels up. Like Yeah, he almost never levels. Which it, is very interesting. Yes. <laughs> you know, that I that we're like So I think the the big thing really is just has a lot to do with the play pattern of Draven. So I think Draven is the best designed champion because Draven is an efficient unit that feels good to play in the early game. Draven is a card advantage engine that feels good to play in the late game. Draven is the best card in pretty much all of his decks. Like It feels like when you're playing a Draven deck, Draven is almost always a card that you've built your deck around. However, it doesn't feel like you have to draw Draven to win games with decks that are built to use Draven, right? Like, you yeah. know, when I look the at deck discard aggro, without him. Yeah, when I look at discard aggro, like Draven, Draven's not the best card in discard aggro. That's probably Jinx, but like, He's a big part of it, right? The spinning axes are huge. It's discard aggro. The spinning axes allow you to play your visions, your things. Like Draven is an integral part of discard aggro's game plan. It's a huge, hugely powerful card. It's a very plus tempo play. It's usually the best turn three they have, and it's very, very hard to deal with turn three Draven out of the discard aggro deck, especially if they have an aggressive early start. And then, you know, on the on the other side of the coin, you know, Draven's like killing you dead on that table. On the other side, if you look at like as Draven. Draven's just like the best value mid range card. Like he just generates an axe when you play him. He generates an axe every time you attack. He's hard to block and you get to rummage your axes into new cards. And then that's basically the card advantage plan for the deck. Like that's pretty much the whole deck's card advantage plan is they're, they're a mid range deck and they're trying to one for one you into the dirt and their card advantage plan is Draven and like ballistic bot. Yeah. And ballistic bot. Um, also very notable his champ spell feels so good to play yes and synergizes extremely well with him absolutely as it you know ideally should and yeah, that's how he levels up is it, what yeah. exactly when he True. levels up it's almost always because of whirling death yeah it's it really is yeah. or you're playing against azarelli yes <laughs> both of those things um yeah, but yeah it, it, so my two cents is actually a little different than yours it's that he's so versatile in so many archetypes he's like a payoff and kind of an enabler. And like just the spinning axe cards are so the fact that they buff your units so you get to attack with a bunch of two power units into a single three health blocker. Like the fact that you can discard them to themselves, they don't feel that bad, but it, it ramps up kind of slowly, it doesn't feel oppressive. Like Dusty definitely doesn't feel unbeatable. But at the same time, like you can either use those as discard fodder or dis and discard outlets or you can um or you can try to turn them into real cards and that's just, that's just a really good combination of things you know yeah this card is incredibly fair it's incredibly fun for the person playing it and playing and against it. and playing against it if you respect how interesting it makes the game because it, it does with this the existence of zero mana plus one plus oh even if you have to discard another card to do it that just creates such interesting combat situations and game Absolutely. states especially because like man i love the draven attacks where you're like you know you attack and you're like man i kind of hope my opponent doesn't block because i don't want to discard any of these cards to this axe if they do block but i'm gonna have to axe and then the, you know from the other side of the table they're like I terrified i love blocking when they have the like axe showing especially against like as draven where they they don't have like you know i don't i don't really want to make my opponent discard a card against discard aggro but like against as draven i love making blocks and being like all right like yeah i'm down to trade my slightly better card for your axe and a the worst card in your hand like and we'll make this trade right yeah or you know you could a lot of the times i just like toss a two two in front of a one two or whatever I'm like, I, you know are, do you want to play your axe and discard a card or do you want to like deal with this 2-2 later it, like there's just interesting decisions on all sides of draven i think yep so that's why i think he's the best designed card i agree all right let's get into the rest of them yes the next question comes from dragon what were your biggest surprises regarding the seasonals this time around we got into it a little bit um but uh just the sheer volume of 
nuts off meta decks that were encountered. Yeah, I have to agree. Like the there were lineups that I had never th- seen and never thought about Even that began to conceive of. Yeah, I've, like some guy playing Talia Malphite. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I I would never in a million years have registered that deck for this tournament, and he like crushed people with it or whatever. Like, yeah. you know. So I mean, yeah, I, I just one hundred percent agree. That's by far the most shocking, shocking thing to me. For me, it's um, triple aggro going nine zero. That's really cool. Yeah, that's what Mister Emo- Emotional played emotional not e yeah, whatever um and uh the other part being the dearth not of azarelia really but the lack of thresh nasus was actually really really interesting to me yeah there was what six copies of thresh nasus i think uh it was like that or eight, it was like eight, six or eight something eight, like that eight. i think it was eight yeah um and like the fact that that was the best deck going the last seasonal good against the best deck now like the fact that it just wasn't everywhere is, is pretty cool yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, my my thing for the seasonal was like the only thing I was sure of when we recorded the last episode was that I was playing Thresh and Asus, So I, I am a little surprised that other that feels like the easiest place to start to me. So I'm impressed that. Well, for other people, the easiest place to start was to target it, I suppose. Yeah. And that's why that's part of the reason I feel like we saw these lineups. Yeah, very, very possible. It feels like people did really definitely did target Thresh and Asus some some amount. Weirdly enough, sense. it felt like it felt like my weakest deck the whole time. Yeah. Strange. Even though I wanted, I did win a ton of games with it. Let's. Yeah, I've never. I don't. I can't remember the last time I looked at a lineup and was like, "Man, my Thresh Nasus deck looks bad here." <laughs> like they just. At least, I mean, I didn't queue into any, so lucky me. Oh, I queued into several. But um, the next question comes from Keon Spy. Now, lurk is a new keyword, and it only works once a turn. Would it be a good nerf to Blade Dance and Emperor's Dias too if that also worked once a turn? Uh I. I think I'd like it. I don't know. I'm going to go with no. I actually, I actually, ha- I'm going with firm no. And, yeah, okay. I, and, I, and I have a pretty good reason, I think, as, yeah. to, as to why. I've thought about this one before. Uh, so, Ionia's like, like identity. All right, so, let, let's start with Blade Dance, because I'll have a different answer for Emperor's Dias. But Blade Dance specifically, Ionia's identity has a lot to do with recalling and resummoning units in the mm-hmm. same round. So, like, cards like Monastery of Hirana... I mean, solitary monk. There's the retreat return cards, right? The lead and follow. There is so many cards that pick up units and then you want to replay them that I feel like, like recalling units and replaying them is, an, is absolutely core to Ionia's like gameplay. Basically. I feel like it's one of the, like similar to like nightfall in tar gone, right? Like it's just, it's one of the most important things to the region as a whole that differentiates it from the other regions. It's, it's the recall things and replay them region. So like, I don't want Blade Dance to say once per turn because that really just flies directly in the face of that. Like, like it would feel so bad to not be able to play Ribbon Dancer and Monastery of Hirana in the same deck and be able to do like, you know, Blade Dancer, pick it up, Blade. Like, that just feels like everything Ionia wants to be doing. So I really don't want to see Blade Dance say once per turn. Yeah, that's a good reason. And I think I actually just agree with you. Yeah. Emperor's Dias, on the other hand, and Azir, I could... I, I would not hate nearly as much if they said once per turn because that's not like a Shrima identity thing. Um, I really don't want Blade Dance to say it, but if you want to take it out on Azir and Emperor's Dias, I don't love it, but I, I think that would be a reasonable plan. Yeah. Yeah, I, I pretty much feel the same there. Um, I also heard like the really weird wording of like, Blade Dance only working if you have the attack token, or is your only working if you have the attack token, or if you spend the attack token? Usually they don't do things that are that, like, inelegant. Like, I've yeah, heard that's those just... changes suggested to cards in the past. Like, if you change very specifically what they say, it fixes the specific problem. That's not really how they've operated in the past. That's not how you should just operate in general. Yeah, usually. totally. Yeah, it's I, just it's just sloppy and it looks weird and people see it and they think to themselves like that's yeah anybody that plays the game starting tomorrow or whatever the day of the patch on is going to be like why on earth is this card worded so bad <laughs> yeah exactly it just looks janky and sloppy yeah I agree yeah and, and I think it's good that they generally avoid making those fixes yeah yeah um so I'm not sure what we'll see but like yeah all right, the last question is actually another question from Karen Ol. Uh bets on which champion will be the one uh will be the one we'll call not great but be busted this time. Currently we only have Yeah, we only set. we only have the one. So we want to take so we we know one of them 
and then there's two unknowns. So I think it's even more fun. <laughs> Do you want to pick? What are the? Wait, wait. wait uh, Pike, Pike and Echo. Echo, right? Yeah. So we have Rexai. Do you think we're gonna call Rexai bad and she'll be great, or? Do you think it's more likely to be one of two unrevealed? Um, I feel like if we're gonna if we're gonna uh, have a champion be busted this time around, I throw my vote in for Pike. I'm is is the question which one will we call bad and will be busted, or is it the other way? Uh, will be the one we will call not great but be busted. Okay. Okay. So I guess that's a little different than just saying which one will be busted. Um, but it's, we, we got to. Yeah, I feel like that's the more important half of the I question, think at least. I think that my answer is going to be Echo, because I think that we've said in the past, like we've said repeatedly that we've been not that happy with Predict uh, and that Predict has felt generally uninspiring. I think if we see a weird version of Echo, so it I don't even know what it might say. Maybe it says more of the, like, make things in my deck, predict, draw them things, or, like, maybe it does something somewhat inconsistent. Maybe He'll be a three mana 5-2 with uh, oh. with quick attack <laughs> with predict. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think it's, I think given the mechanics that we have and given how weird, like, like the champion Echo is weird. He like yes. reverses in time. I don't know how on earth that weird. I, like, there's got to be a way that his that Echo's ultimate from League of Legends is going to be somewhat shown off. Yeah, in Legends of Runeterra, which for those of you who maybe don't play League, he like goes back in time four seconds to where he was four seconds ago, and then there's like a big explosion basically. Yeah, so he, he time travels backwards. I don't know how on earth they're going to do that in a card game, but I bet it's going to be weird, and I bet we're going to get it wrong, and it's going to be busted. I certainly hope it's going to be weird and interesting. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I do not. I do not want another five. If, five if, two. if we know anything, it's that the level up animation will be freaking sick. Oh, facts. Yeah, the level up animation game has gone through the roof since the game. Oh came yeah, out. they've they've had. Can we talk about some, that? Some massive level up. Mass. Animation it's a. It's ups. been a big level up. Level up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How about you, Noble? What do you? What do you? Which Which one are you taking? Is going to be well, busted? I'll just say Rexai. You know, just to like really round it out. But I think that. Um, the it is a very well costed three cost unit. I think some people are gonna do some like um, maybe it'll involve Riven. Um, and that that card might be slated for a buff. Who knows? Um, maybe you know um, Riven, but mostly Riven because of the the one mana plus two power thing. Um, with oh, Shape that's, Stone, that's cute. El Elixir. And brother spawns like maybe that maybe the thing to do with Rexai is like play a couple lurkers, but actually try to play him and like play slam him double elixir like of wrath four six, and then attacks as a six six, and then you buff his power by four. Or Just something. turn, make him a boat. We're gonna build a boat. Yeah, but that's and a magic like, term that that has funny crossover and anymore. Some units and like maybe that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't even, I never even really thought about the like, just put it in Noxus and play a bunch of bump spells on Rek'Sai and just try and turbo flip it. That actually seems yeah, it was in the, potentially it was gas. In the trailer. Yeah, I saw the, I saw the like Elixir of Wrath the Rek'Sai and I was like, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> if <Yeah>. you say so. <laughs> yeah, you never know. But I mean, maybe, maybe like if, if you have like a lot of those pieces, it could I be mean, good. Think of, I mean, it's not. What about like, Tarek? It's not incredibly unreasonable to just like every now and then you have a game where your first two turns are bank spell mana or like you go one drop skip your turn two, bank your two spell mana and turn three you like have a rexi and two elixir rats in hand she just flips <laughs> it's just gee, that would be so disgusting it would be are you absolute kidding me? Filth. <laughs> that would be so gross <laughs> That's... Yeah, if, if our turn one one drop is ancient prep then oh, shape stone shape also it? does it and we've predicted to try to find these weird pieces yeah i'm i'm here for this this sounds but it's a lot easier like Half of the games you won't be able to do a turn four. And the secret was Lessons Ruined Terra is, yeah, half the games you can't do it on turn three, you have to do it on turn four. But it's going to happen a lot more consistently on turn four than it would on turn three because it's much easier to set all the stuff up. And, like, you know, turn four, 10 power tramplers. It actually is 11, right? Because Rex like, gains a power, which he levels up. Yep. Um, um, and then just bonk them. Right, if, if it all lines up, could be good. Yeah. All right. Uh, is that is that all? Perfect. So, do you guys have anything else you want to say before we round it out, Noble? Very excited for next week. I really, I've been wanting to see what Pike has done for a very long time. I think that was one of my answers 
back when we started and someone asked what kind of champions I wanted to see from League. Uh, very excited about that. Would be really interested to see if there's going to be like a Lurker with Elusive that kind of flavorfully fits and could be quite powerful because that might be a really well cast costed um, elusive thing. There is the speculation that the 8-drop Bilgewater thing is Pike's boat. You know, like how the Leviathan and the Dreadway and the Siren and the Tusk Raider are boats. Yeah. That could be really interesting, especially if he has like Lurk and it puts him on top or something. It could be neat. Didn't um, know Pike had a boat. I don't know that Pike does have a boat. He might. Seems likely. Yeah. He's from Bilgewater. I mean, he's they kind of all have He's boats. like a pirate assassin, right? Yeah, he's got to yeah. have a boat of some kind, right? Like, and he also, like, has all that sneaky stuff in League where he, like, does a lot of jumping around and also, like, goes in- invisible. Well, so, like, he might he might just have elusive and, and lurk, and that could be really cool. That's fair. Like he might drop. be the one with I thought he just, like, elusive. was a dude who, like, swam underwater a lot because, like, all of his a lot of his abilities reference, like, one of his abilities is, like, undertow. Like, he, like, goes underwater. He yeah. definitely yeah. does go underwater. Like, that's definitely a thing. I don't know that that means he doesn't ha- or does necessarily have a boat i'm not a league of legends lore expert he might have a boat doesn't he ride a pet sea monster does he i I don't think he has a submarine does he i don't (laughs) think he has a submarine (laughs) no i said sea monster well then maybe the boat is a sea monster yeah i'd be into that which functions as a why wouldn't it just be a sea monster it could be both no it can't it can be a sea monster and a lurker. Why not? No, no. I said you can't be a sea monster in a boat. But it can be a sea monster that functions. Okay, we're done. <laughs> oh, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Thank you all for listening it is a to boat this episode. Form not function like how King Jarvin the Fourth or <laughs> King Jarvin the Third is a boat. Yeah. So thank you all for listening to this episode of Champ Select. Uh, if you are a member of our Discord, then thank you. If you aren't, shame on you. You should join our Discord. We say it every time. The fact that you haven't is quite honestly ridiculous. So make sure you join our Discord. The link is in the description of whatever platform you're listening to this on. Uh, Make sure to follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Twitch. Follow our YouTube. We have new episodes every week. And without further ado, we'll see you all on next week of Champ Select. Bye-bye.